Boom. Looks like we're live streaming. Tony meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Okay. Well, that's a good sign when it says it. <laughs> I believe it. So I hope that we got uh, volume up and and that all working. So hopefully the tech's all there. All right. Yeah, let me take a little sip of water here. It's two of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no kidding. Cool. All right, everybody. Uh, Tony Raffin today. Tony and I, we're going to be talking about the effects of um, CV-19 and uh, the stock market and everything that we're dealing with right now and uh, how it's affecting the housing market, not just real estate sales or property management, but also the distressed property market. Um, Tony's got some huge insights. Uh, Tony's a good friend of mine. And also he has, um, he has an extensive background in, um, in distressed properties and real estate brokerage. Tony has sold over 3,000 properties, over a billion with a B. Okay. 7,000 properties. B. Oh, seven. seven. <laughs> I'm an Sorry. asshole. Excuse me. Sorry. A couple, couple thousand short, you know. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> so 7,000 properties, over a billion with a B um, in, uh, in production. Uh, and yeah, so Tony, um, mostly, di mostly distressed properties. That's his bread and butter. Uh, Tony, thank you for being on here. How's it going, buddy? Good. I keep, gotta keep my heads up, man. I mean, gotta, gotta keep looking, uh, forward and positive. I stay negative is all it's going to do is make you more miserable and, you know, want you to do stupid things. It's, I think, I think we're going to be all right at the end of the day, but We've never seen this is we're in uncharted territory right now. Yeah, agreed. Uh, this is different than uh, the last time, right? I mean, it's just it's uh, it's different all around. So um, what we're going to talk about, guys, we're going to talk about um, three diff. We're going to break this down into three different uh, topics, pretty much uh, the awareness. So uh, what is happening right now? We're going to talk about the opportunities that are going to come from this. And uh, then the action steps, things that you should be taking if you want to stay ahead of the curve and, uh, you know, grow your business and not just um, and not just stay in the business trying to survive. So, Tony, um, why don't you talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing going on right now and um, and what some of the, some of those key indicators are? Well, it's di I think it's different all over the country, but where we're at in Michigan, our, our biggest thing is uh, the governor just shut us down. So as of midnight tonight, we will not be able to practice real estate. We can finish up our deals, but we're not going to be able to practice real estate. We're not going to be able to show homes. We're not going to be able to list homes. We can work from home and do what we need to do. And the majority, you, you know, besides the showing and the listing, the majority of it, we can take care of the paperwork online, which is fine. But our governor chose to close us down as a non-essential service. So we're not going to be able to work for three weeks, which means a lot of our listings are not going to be able to show for three weeks. Go to so, other states and they're showing. We're just, we're basically, we're done. So does this mean that you can't go into contract or you just can't show property? Well, I mean, in theory, no, we can't even go under contract because how can we go under contract if we're not supposed to be working? I mean, it's only a misdemeanor ticket if you get caught working, but at the end of the day, her goal is to stay at home, stay in, stay sheltered. It's a lock-in basically. Yeah. You can go to the so, doctor, you can go grocery shopping, you can walk your dog, stay away from six feet from people, but you can't go to work. Thank God okay. I work from home or, or my office is six blocks from my, from my house. So I could walk up here and get on the computer and do my work do paperwork, but that's pretty much it. So let's say you're at, let's say you're at your house and you have somebody who wants to put in an offer on a property. Are you able to do that? electronically. Okay, good. Yeah. So, so investors, um, investors that are looking right now to acquire property that don't necessarily need to see it. Um, they're okay to put in offers and that business can move forward, right? That business can move forward. The homes are empty, even though they can't get inside of them because we're not supposed to show them. Um, but you know, as most of the banks that we work with or hedge funds or inst financial institutions that we work with are in other States. Very few are in Michigan. 
they have different laws in those states. If those places are shut down, they're working from home also. So I know a lot of people that do HUD and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and they're working from home. The asset managers are working from home. They're on their cell phones. Okay. So talk to us a little bit about the, uh, the mortgage forbearance and, um, and, and everything that's, that's wrapped up in that and how that's affecting us. Well, right now, uh, Dr. Ben Carson has put a moratorium on foreclosures and evictions. So they're not going to be able to evict anybody from a rental. It doesn't mean that they, they, it doesn't mean that they didn't pay or that they can go pay and whatever. They, 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 they cannot be evicted, plain and simple. They'll still owe money, but they cannot be evicted. Uh, mortgage forbearance is when they take your mortgage payment and put it on the back end of your loan. So let's say we've got, you know, you're behind, you're, you're out of work three months, you can't work. They'll take three months worth of payments and move it to the end of the loan. You'll still get charged interest on it, but you won't have the money due. And according to Dr. Carson, they won't mark you late, but you're going to need to make sure that you contact your mortgage company as quickly as possible prior to needing anything. Don't wait till the last minute, because when we were in the foreclosure crisis years ago, people waited until the bailiff was at their door to respond. And it's like, if there's a problem, we need to know about it right away so we can fix the problem as quickly as possible. Got it. Okay. So um, I'm a real estate agent and I want to make sure that I'm serving my clients. I'm calling them, trying to keep them up to date, maybe doing some other creative things to, uh, to update my clients because they're wondering, what do I do? How does this affect the real estate market? So I should be telling them that um, if we have, um, sorry, I had an echo there for a sec. Um, for, uh, for the mortgage forbearance, tell them to contact their mortgage company right away to let them know if they're going to have an issue. Is that right? Yes, immediately. Immediately, before, before the problem happens. Like, like us, we're out of work right now. So whatever we had in the bank, it is. We're not going to have anything in the bank. I can guarantee you for three weeks. Michigan's even come out with a, the uh, Michigan Association of Realtors. He's even come out with a COVID-19 addendum extending closings after April 13th, because it's no fault of anybody else's. Yeah. So is that a mandatory extension or can people close if they want to? They can't close because if the title companies aren't going to be allowed to do the transaction, they're done. In Michigan, but, we have a title company that takes care of it all. In different states, it's different. Like in California, they have an escrow company and a title company. Title it. companies technically are insurance companies. So they're trying to go around that waiver. So if they can get around that waiver, they're an insurance company and we'll be fine. Most, well, most of their stuff is online too. Yeah. Mo well, yeah. Most title companies, um, there's mobile closers, you know, a lot of title companies are working from home as well. So they should still be able to close on properties moving forward, uh, even in the next few weeks. I think they're just trying to get people from interacting with each other. That's the key. I mean, that really is what that, what I believe the key is. They're trying to get people to interact, to stop the interaction with each other. Yeah. Face to face. Correct. Yeah, you know it's amazing. It's um, until we have it's, until we have lockdown everywhere. I mean, it's you can't you can't control the general population. So even if you say yes, you should social socially distance yourself. Well, dude, I have neighbors that are fairly educated, and they have people in and out of their house, and yeah. they have they, they, I know they have their their high school uh, daughter. In, the, in, her, in her car with four other teenage girls driving places, going to places. I don't know where the hell they're going, but well, I'm you're sure not, there's people are you, there. Are you, you're not locked down in North Carolina then? Um, as of this morning, I don't believe so. I haven't been able to um, check yet. I've been on these kinds of calls all day today. But um, yeah, it's, you know, that's continuing the, the spread. Correct. So yeah, these, these are definitely things we all know, right? So yeah. Um, so if we have if we have mortgage uh, mortgage forbearance and we have um, everything stopping right, um, we were talking before about how this is different than two thousand eight to two thousand and twelve. Can you talk a little bit about that? What did you see back then, and you know what what came of it? And then also you know what what are you seeing right now, and how is it different? Well, that was a slower process back then. I think the biggest tragedy of, of that era that started everything was 9-11. 
and 9-11. This kind of reminds me of 9-11 right now because I'm looking out at the roads out my window. There's very few cars out there. I mean, we were pretty much on lockdown for a few days, at least maybe a week on 9-11. A lot of people, they don't even realize what 9-11 was. They were too young. They don't know yet. But 9-11 was scary for, for pretty much all of us. You know, now this is kind of even scarier because everyone's going to get hurt. If you're not working, unless you're a doctor or a police officer or, you know, a fireman, somebody that's an essential service. I mean, do I see pandemonium? No, I don't. I, I mean, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to last long enough. I, I think this is going to be short lived. Dr. Oz was on uh, TV this morning after he spoke with that doctor in France that's using the malaria drug and uh, what is a Z Pax, the Z, a Z, a Zithromycin. They're using those pills and they're curing this 100% in six, five to six days. So they're starting trials today. They set the protocol yesterday on Sunday. So they're going to start trials today. I think the United States is not letting us do it yet, but they're doing trials in France immediately. They don't care. But even though, that, like I said, this drug has been around since 1934 and it works, they've only got about 10 million doses available, but it should be able to stop this in its tracks. And if that happens, we should be all set within the next three or four weeks. I I, <laughs> hey, I have a I have a different I have a different. I'm staying positive, baby. I'm listen. When I hear these people talk, when I told my doctor about it, my doctor said that's bullshit. Nothing is a hundred percent. And Doctor Oz, when he heard it, said that's bullshit. Nothing is a hundred percent. But Doctor Oz, after talking to this guy and understanding everything that he he did and how it was, he's very optimistic. Well, let's, let's do this. Let's keep our opinions out of it. And let's think about, and I can say it to Tony because Tony's my buddy, right? <laughs> so let's keep our opinions out of it. And let's look realistically. Um, I always look at hope for the best, but expect the worst, right? You have to, you have to plan because you have to, you have to try to see what those opportunities are so that you can, uh, you can be a first mover, you know, yeah. first movers are the ones that um, like, you know, what happened to the guy that had the idea for Velcro, but never did anything about it. Right. Well, you, you don't know who he is. Right. So um, let's look at 90 days. So we'll say 90 days out. We are still um, still on lockdown or maybe just getting out of lockdown. Right. Kids don't go back to school because it's summertime. Who knows? Maybe they maybe we start summer school instead to adapt. But Either way, the world is going to be different for sure. Now, you said um, we had um, we had an uptick in eviction and in, in evictions or foreclosures, foreclosures um, the month prior to this starting. What what numbers are we talking about? Because that's a that's certainly a coincidence. About a fifty percent increase. No kidding. Once again, if you've got two, a fifty percent increase is one. The numbers are very 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 low. Uh -huh. But the uptick okay. is there. Okay. All right. Got it. So, so not, not as, uh, as relevant as, as I may have thought. So no, sir. And, and I had numbers for sir. our state, sir. Sorry. No, I <laughs> forget it. <laughs> We're friends. I we have, can say that. I have a tie on Tony. <laughs> yeah, no, you know me better than that. So basically what, <laughs> so basically, um, what happened is I ran some numbers last week. I was on a podcast last week and we ran the numbers. And even across the country, foreclosure rates are up, but they're not at any kind of level. Even the, the, the lowest foreclosure rate was actually two months ago. The lowest we've ever seen in the last 15 years was two months ago. Okay. And then it upticked from there. So that doesn't mean that we're in some drastic, you know, issue or problem here. It just means we have an uptick. Does it, this is going to probably add to it. But the problem is they're not going to foreclose. So it'll be it'll be artificial. I don't believe this is an economic problem that we're having. I believe this is a existential problem that we're having that's of no fault of anybody. Okay, let me let me touch on that. So you say they're not going to foreclose. Now let's think about it this way. We have um, think about industry. Okay, we have uh, airlines. Okay, that's going to be a huge, uh, huge. bailout. Huge bailout! Holy shit! Like, un, like unimaginable. Um, but that's 50, that's fifty billion. They're saying. Yeah, but that and and that's just that's just to start, right? Scratching the surface. So 
so you you know we're talking about that we're talking about hotels nobody's in hotels we're talking about events but not just events and sporting events but everything else that's ancillary that comes weddings bar mitzvahs you name it group gatherings are going to be gone for quite a while yes so with all these things the the amount of transactions even after the um you know the three or four weeks that you estimate dr dr tony Be before <laughs> wait three or four weeks for them to prove that it works so oh, okay, I think okay once they can prove that it works then i think you'll start seeing a little bit more confidence a little bit more positivity because we can overcome this we're the united states of america i don't care what anybody says this is going to be a blip on the radar in five years or in 10 years it's going to affect us it's it will affect us but i don't think it's going to be as bad as people think it will be right now i'm in the middle of it basically i just got laid off and i haven't been laid off i've been in this industry for almost 30 years and ever being in this industry i've never been laid off so don't tell me you know i'm laid off and i can't work it's like i'd rather know i got laid off and because of some reason this to me this is not a reason this is a a catastrophe like like they're like they're saying we're we're fighting a war with an invisible enemy so let's talk about housing that takes you know months or years to see different effects happen right i mean yes. like the cycle where you have um a second home market that starts feeling effects or well we'll start with stock market you have stock market that goes down and now you have retirement the, that that is affected so now that you have retirement that's affected you look at florida florida is a second home or luxury market because yep. it's a decision when you purchase property there but also a hospitality um state so when you're a hospitality state people aren't working you don't have as you don't have move up transactions happening you don't have um uh, you don't have first home buyers and now you have 50% of transactions that are being taken from second home purchasers where they are making the decision, the conscious effort not to purchase property. Now you have new construction that's been going like bananas for the past few years. And, you know, everybody that drives by and all the real estate agents have been saying, wow, this is such a good sign. This is such a good sign for the past few years. And I'm like, it's not because it's inventory that is going to affect the, se the secondary home market. So if we have um, all of this new construction and now they have to get more aggressive because they have who to report to? Shareholders. Banks. Yeah, the shareholders, the banks. Shareholders in the banks. Yeah. So either you know the banks who are going to be, who are gonna have uh, financial pressure and have financial pressure on them now are going to require a further bailout and to what help help builders you know so builders now that have to report to their shareholders are going to have incentives they're going to be reducing their prices now people on the market they won't be able to sell so but there's going to be all of these transactions that can't take place now anyway so there's going to be more homes that are coming on the market for sale we see increased inventory increased days on market and that now lower prices exactly yeah we have we have supply we have demand but then we also have new construction that's being purchased and then other people that can't sell so those homes then go under property management because they have to do something with them it's either something. what do i do do i sell my house do i rent it out do i leave it vacant or do i set it on fire and collect the insurance money but it has to be something you know that was not a good that was the fire and the insurance money was not a good <laughs> Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Full disclaimer. Full disclosure. I'm not recommending you do that. Exactly. I am not recommending that you do that. That is a bad idea. That is not recommended. Um, it's just an example. You can do anything, right? I mean, like we all have actions we can take, whatever actions, but we have to own those actions. So we have all of this and we have people who aren't going to be able to purchase so we have that slowdown, even with the forgiveness that we see, and I know this is a lot of information leading into this question and this point, but I really need you and the listeners to understand like where I'm wrapping this from. So all of these effects, now you still have homeowners that even though they're working, they are now, they were living paycheck to paycheck before that, they're still not able to pay their mortgage. 
So those, even though we have mortgage forbearance, we're still going to see a high rise at some point, I mean, even if it's a year or a year and a half down the road, we're going to see a rise in the distressed property market, I would think. But yes. tell me if I'm wrong. No, you're right. You're right. And basically, it's the people that are going week to week. And that's going to probably be the beginning of the tip of the iceberg. And the people that are going week to week, even if they do get help and assistance to cover everything in the forbearance on their mortgage payment and not get evicted, mm -hmm. eventually they still going to have to make up that money. Like the, the money that they're giving, the SBA is giving to businesses is going to be like a very, very low interest rate loan to keep your employees on and keep going. You still have to make it up to pay them back. And if, yeah. those, peoples are hurt, if those people are hurt down at the bottom, it's going to affect everybody all the way up to the top. Because Goldman Sachs, listen to this, Tony, this is going to blow your fucking socks off. Okay. Goldman Sachs did a study that was released a few days ago and they interviewed very aggressively 10,000 small business owners right at the beginning of this. Out of those 10,000 small business owners, 53% said that they will not be able to survive past 90 days. We won't. Plain and simple, because the effects are going to dwindle down to everybody and it's going to hit us hard. It's like just turning off the spigot. I know people always have to have basic housing. And it always works. Investors will always be there trying to pick up the pieces because I can tell you there's a lot of people, the, a lot of investors out there. They're licking their chops, but they're licking their chops way too early right now. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Way too early. So with that note, I I appreciate that so much. Um when we say way too early, let's let's look at key indicators that we can use to kind of forecast what might be not too early, right? What might be a reasonable time frame where we start seeing, okay, there's there's opportunities not just for investors, but for real estate agents, property managers, you know, in order to in order to, you know take advantage of certain opportunities in the market. And when I say take advantage, I don't mean take, um, take advantage of people. What I mean is to, there's an opportunity out there. And when you see the opportunity to serve others, then that's when we have to take that opportunity and, and make sure that we're doing the right thing and we serve others. But someone's going to take the opportunity. The question is, is it going to be you or somebody else? So what, what kind of time frame do you think that we're looking at? And what, what do those opportunities look like, Tony? I think you probably start seeing stuff in six months, probably six months down the road before you start seeing some devastation, some small, and then it's just going to, it's going to snowball effect down there, probably within the next 12 months to a year and a half, you'll see a little bit more. Unless, like I said, the government's stepping in big time here. We're already, they already said we we're at the point of no return at, $20 trillion in debt. And we're talking about this stimulus package is $2 trillion. I mean, our GDP is only $5 trillion. So when you throw in $2 trillion just like that, I mean, that's like, wow. I mean, that's a lot of money. And unfortunately, our grandchildren will be continuing to pay that off, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, it's probably a year, year and a half away before you see some really substantial problems. Are there going to be opportunities to make money? Yes. There's also going to be some hard falls for a lot of other people. And the shame about it is, is this isn't a political thing. This is a, right, Bill Gates, did you see that? Did you see that um, TED talk of Bill Gates talking about um, that the next war will be with a micro, microbiological war that'll kill 10 million people, not a world war. They don't have to worry about nuclear bombs and all that. They got to worry about this little, this little virus that will kill people. I believe and that was a couple of years ago, wasn't it? It was 2015, but dude, it was like he predicted this could happen. The only thing I know is I'm very confident in, in our medical doctors and our scientists and people in the labs right now that we're going to get this under control rather quickly, the sooner, the better, because no person should die from the flu. I mean, I know we lose 42 million people a year worldwide with the flu, but this is just crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, this is this is definitely this is different on all sorts of levels. Right. 
Um, now with Bill Gates, um, you know Bill Gates and um, and what he's been doing. His work has been. I mean, fully dedicated with him and Melinda and the um, with the Gates Foundation to um, to eradicate polio with Rotary and other NGOs over the past several years, and he's contributed heavily in that. And also, if you've seen the um, the Bill Gates documentary on Netflix, that is amazing. If you haven't, somebody seen just that, somebody just told me about it yesterday. I says I got to watch it. They, yeah. This this guy's got a brain like like and he quit college and he's got a brain like no other he's a, and he's using it for good he's such yes. an amazing philanthropist he is his studies um and actually execution of um of putting together uh clean water solutions because sanitation and clean water um that's the next war uh, on disease after sure. after uh curing polio that's that's um the eradication of polio that that's what he's working towards now i'm sure he has a little bit of a sidestep now getting uh getting some control over over this year so yes we're looking at uh of course a lot of devastation a lot of shake up in in what we're seeing um and tony this is interesting because knowing you i can tell that you are in shock because you're, <laughs> you are one of the smartest people I know in business. And I can tell that this is one of those, like you're, you're in, it's, it's the awareness, right? It's, um, and I don't want to compare you to, uh, to, you're going to laugh at me to an alcoholic because, <laughs> but it's when you're an alcoholic first, you have to realize it. You have to have that awakening that it's actually happening, but you're, you know, you're kind of confused and you're like, am I really? What's going on? And then you have to actually do something about it. So it, it's like you're in that stage right now. And I, I think most of the country is as well. But this is when leaders step up and is what do you see next for Tony? Like, what, do you, what are you planning on doing? Because I know you, you know how to adapt. You know how to stay ahead I'm, I'm of the training game. right now. I'm online doing trainings, every single thing that I can do to uh, diversify my business. I don't care what it is. Specialize. I, like right now, you know, I specialize in distressed property. So we do REOs. We do short sales, which are very minimal right now. I think I got one short sale left right now. Um, we do probate because people are always dying. We do divorce cases because people always don't get along. And we do bankruptcy because people always file bankruptcy. So we, we follow all the trends in the distressed property uh, industry, but that sometimes isn't enough. And sometimes you need to get out to the masses. So right now we're, we're learning different marketing techniques to get us over the, over the hump over the next level. You know, podcast, video marketing, awareness, letting people know. At the end of the day, you can only do so much. You live in Michigan, your average house sale is this. You live in California, your average house sale is this. You live in Florida, your average house sale is this. So depending on where you live, kind of predicates what your income is going to be for the most part. Other, You know, there's small little niche areas for everybody, but find something that you can focus on, focus on it and do it your best. So right now we're just trying to learn uh, some of this different type of marketing and focusing on it as importantly as possible and, and really targeting it and saying, okay, this is how we're going to handle it. So honestly, right now, I'm just training, training, training right now. That is, uh, that's interesting. I'm glad to hear you say that because uh, I totally feel like diversification and I, I just, I mean, this is me. I'm just such a geek. I'm like, because <laughs> my, my whiteboard is over there. I can't reach it right now. Yeah. So I wrote down the word diversify. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's absolutely important. That's, um, that's, that's what we do. And that's what we have to do is diversify and, and see what that looks like and be aware. Um, that's why I wanted to talk about that awareness piece first, because once we are aware of what we can do and we're staying on top of the information that's coming in, then we are able to um, to diversify. So, yeah, you were you already have a podcast. Yes. Right? Talk to Tony. Uh, fix it and flip it. Fix it and flip it. Okay. The Talk to Tony is a little vlog where I come up with some rants and uh, that's on YouTube. But fix it and flip it is my podcast and basically what it talks about is people that are buying and selling homes or buying fixing flipping or buying fixing holding 
and taking advantage of properties that need repairs, whether they're distressed. I mean, technically, they're all, most of the time they're distressed, but sometimes you have probate things where someone's passed away, the house is in a shambles, people just want it gone. I don't call that theoretically distressed, but liquidation of some form. Yeah. So when you talk about diversification, are you thinking about diversifying that podcast or uh, pouring some gasoline on it to to really just stay in front of people right now and keep them yes. educated? It's funny you say that because I just found a new podcast studio uh, out in Birmingham. So I'm going to be going doing podcasts over there. I've got a great, great studio over there. And uh, that's going to be one of my things. And I'm, I really want to do a second podcast. And the second podcast, I want to do it basically for real estate agents. It probably won't be as you know, as big as the general public, but, you know, doing it for real estate agents to teach them because right now is the time as this starts happening, real estate agents will start quitting. This is when we thin out the herd and then the strong survive. And then you go into the next up cycle or the down cycle, you survive, you do what you need to do. And then the next up cycle, that's when you get all the newbies come back in. A lot of people can't handle these roller coasters that I call them of, of the economic uh, economic disasters, whether it's man-made or uh, I don't, you don't call this an act of God. I, I, you know, but you understand what I mean. Yeah, no, I absolutely. Um, and I totally agree. I mean, real estate agents, um, there's going to be plenty that are leaving the business, even in property management, you know, uh, property management, when you can't evict and you have, uh, there, Jesus, there's, tenant hate groups, landlord hate groups out there. Have you seen this, Tony? No, I haven't, but I Dude, believe it. It's not even like, I, you know, I would laugh at it too if I heard that and be like, what, what are you talking about? Dude, they are terrorists. Like, this is bad news. There's over 10,000 people that like this page that grew from like 1,000 to 10,000 in three days. And they are pretty much hunting landlords and property managers and threatening them, putting, posting photos of them, like posting uh, comments and, and, um, and posts that are, that are talking about, uh, you know, this tenant that killed the landlord and all that kind of stuff. Rent strikes, like down and dirty stuff, so much to where yeah, I'm concerned for the safety of many property managers. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's I never yeah. heard of that yet, but there's, you know, nothing's going to, I, we're, it's very, it's very, uh, you, most landlords are not bad landlords. No, you always have, you're a landlord. How many yeah. houses do you manage? How many properties do you manage? Right now about 150. 150 houses. So one person doesn't pay their rent. They hate you. They go online and they start a campaign about you. And then everybody who doesn't pay their rent wants to join in on the crowd or all their friends and family. And, and you know, when they, when something negative spreads, it spreads tenfold. When something good spreads, it spreads threefold. And, and who's caught on to this are the extremists. Yes. And, and that's what we're seeing. It's not just um, Johnny Tennant and his aunt from Louisiana. It's extremists. And no, I, I believe, listen, when I was doing yeah. a ton of foreclosures back in, in the late 2000s, oh, I Jesus. mean, you had to really have that. Dude, I would carry a thousand listings. Okay. 1000 yeah. listings. And when you had to evict somebody, we didn't do the evictions, but we had to be there for the evictions to lock up when they were done. It's brutal. It's hard to watch. Somebody's got to do it. Just like somebody's got to be a, a, a funeral director. Yeah. Okay. Somebody's got to run the morgue. Somebody's the yeah. executioner. I mean, we're not that. They go through a whole court process. They do all that. We're just there to take care of the lender, whether it be, like I said, the, the, the financial institution to protect their property. They're not even there. Yeah. Like, you know, nobody's going to JP Morgan. Nobody's going to Wells Fargo and, and threatening their people. But at the same time, we don't know. They may, they may be doing something like that. But that's I've never heard anything like that. That's crazy. So if we talk, uh, if we talk back to uh, distressed, uh, I want to I want to wrap this up, have a circle back, and come up right now with actionable steps that uh, agents and property managers watching this can take in order to get prepared for uh, for what's coming in, uh, in distress, whether it's six months or six years down the road. I mean, there's there's going to be that preparation and the awareness that that needs to be made. So. What would, uh, what would you say to, uh, to someone that wants to 
start learning or educating themselves or just being prepared for what's DM to come me. in distress bar properties? DM me. What is it? Direct message me. I'll get I'm I'm per, I'm pull, I'm getting a class together called the Graduate Distress Property Expert Course, and it will teach people on how to get listings, uh, service the listings properly, and dispose of distressed properties for the financial institutions. That's fantastic. What um what what else is out there to pay attention to? Like, should they be looking? What key indicators should be, should they be looking at? Um, days on market, inventory, should they be looking at specific uh, trends or uh, publications or resources to, to see when uh, when this is going to be a start, hotter? Start looking at the jobless rate. Okay. The jobless rate is going to be probably one of the biggest indicators on what's going to happen because when somebody loses a job, it's got to be replaced by something. That's why that, we're hoping. Is that the same thing as the unemployment rate? Yes. The, yes. Okay. The, yeah. 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 The unemployment. Rate. I, I keep thinking about the jobs numbers. You watch the jobs numbers and and or the unemployment rate is probably one of the biggest uh, uh, factors that you look at when people are losing their jobs and they have nowhere to go. There's nothing else to do. That's one of the first things they do is let go of their house. They still got to eat. You know, let's not make the house payment. We got to eat. Yeah. No, that's that's good. Unemployment rate. What else are we looking for? Days on the market's probably another one. When you start seeing values of houses drop down and, and the inventory rise up, then you'll notice another little trend there. As inventory, as inventory rises, prices fall, supply and demand. It's a basic rule. You'll start seeing prices taper. As prices taper, you'll start seeing that means we're in for somewhat of a downfall. Do I think we're going to head for another downfall like before? A couple of days ago, I would have said no, not at all, because we've got so many systems in place to prevent that type of uh, tragedy that we had. I would call it a tragedy, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. um, but now this is outside of anybody's. I, I, I mean, this is, like I said at the beginning of the uh, conversation, this is uncharted territory. Being in uncharted territory, you're just, you're looking and you're like, all right, what are we going to do? All right, what's the next step? How are we going to handle it? Like I said, I'm just preparing and learning so that I know the next direction to go. Other people are going to have to do the same thing. Some people will just run. They'll run and hide. And all right, I'm not going to sell real estate anymore. I'm going to be a, you know, I'm going to go work at McDonald's or I'm going to go work at a restaurant, be a waitress or a waiter. You know, they're going to do something. If the restaurants are back open based on this, we yeah. don't know. I'm, I'm looking at the positive. I think we'll be out of this by, not out of this. I think we'll be over the hump by May. So about 30 days, maybe 45 days. So um, what about uh, to, uh, to look at um, foreclosure stats and those types of numbers that you look at to, uh, to really see what's going on there? Where do, where do, what kind of resource do we go to to look for that? Real trends. Real trends usually got a lot of good, uh, good numbers and, and their statistics are pretty straight. So you can, you can look at real trends and they'll tell you where you know, where the foreclosures are larger. Like when I looked in our county, I knew which city was the number one city of foreclosures. I knew which was was the was the least of the top 10. Then you, you know, you go to other counties, then you look at the whole state in general. All right, this county is worse than this county. They're pretty, and then they break, excuse me, then they break it up based on states. So you can get it by county, by city, by state, you know, and then in the whole country. Got it. Probably my biggest resource, real cool. trend. Yeah, those, so some key takeaways that uh, that I got from you, Tony, and I think that everybody got here is um, pay attention to the unemployment rate. Uh, Real Trends has some good stats and diversify. So diversify, however you decide that you want to diversify in your business, diversify. Be aware of what's going on. Uh, Tony is putting together, uh, well, he's, you're going to ramp up your podcast. You said you just got a new podcast studio space. Just got a new podcast studio space, going to be signing some papers next week, and then I'll be doing, I'll be back up and running. I've got, uh, we took a little bit of time off. I've got a real good podcast that's coming out shortly, another another episode with an advertising agency, because the majority of flippers that we know, they know how to fix houses, they know to get them right, but they don't know how to market them properly. So us as agents can help them out, or they can learn how to market themselves, because marketing is the key. You know, what? what is that old saying? build it and they will come. No, that's not true. Build it and get a marketer 
and they will come. You're damn right, man. I'm, I'm glad that you said that. It's, um, I have this analogy, you know, you can have the best meatballs in New Jersey, but if nobody knows about your meatballs, it doesn't matter. You're not going to sell any meatballs. That's right. That, that's a, that, that, that is so true. People don't realize it. Just because you made it, if they don't know anything about it, that's why they P.T. Barnum was, you know, the king of, of, of marketing. He really was the king of marketing. Yep. So, um, yeah, that leads me to, uh, let's see, I believe on Thursday, we're going to be ta talking about digital marketing, not Tony, unfortunately not. Sorry, buddy. But um, we're going to have um, we're going to have someone who has the bar set high uh, to talk about digital marketing on Thursday. And we are going to keep bringing you uh, leaders in the industry in order to uh, to keep you guys, real estate agents and property managers ahead of the curve, equipped and ready to adapt. So thank you, Tony, for being on. Any last words you want to leave anyone with here? Stay positive. Stay positive. That's the biggest thing I can say. Don't look for doom and gloom. Look for the good things that are going to come out of this. And I think, I think we're all going to come out of this a lot stronger. And, uh, you know, and I won't get political, but Trump said we're going to have a big party when this is all said and done because we're all going to be in good shape. I really think it's going to help us all out. I mean, there's always some fatalities or tragedies that happen in the meantime, but we didn't know this was coming. And now that it's here, we're dealing with it as best as we can. So we got to stay positive, stay focused. We got our health right now. We got our families. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Even if everything was gone, as long as you got your families and everybody's healthy, those kids, you know, that's all that matters. Amen to that. Except you might get sick of them after a week of homeschooling. <laughs> you know, now that sports is off of TV, you know, I was, I was watching TV the other day. I saw this lady sitting next to me and I'm like, who is this? I think she's my wife. But yeah, she's, nice. she's really nice. Yeah, no kidding. Hey, who's this hot chick? Whoa. <laughs> All right. Okay, Tony, thanks, thanks, for, for, being, thanks for being on. Uh, guys, uh, drop a comment if you have any questions for Tony. And um, stay tuned. We'll have more. Um, we'll have more of this, uh, more of these great speakers here and industry leaders keep you guys running your business. <laughs>